Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So as always, we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel. Anvita is, as you know, a psychosexual therapist, and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. But today we're very excited because we also have with us Dr. Tanea Narendra, or otherwise known as Dr. Cuteris, as most of you will know her because she's a huge personality on social media, and she goes by the name Dr. Cuteris. And... Um, Tanea is studying to be a gynecologist. Tanea is also somebody who speaks up a lot for uh, vaginal health, for um, literal health and literacy. So we're really, really excited to have Tanea with us today. Tanea, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and talk more about interesting things. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. So Tanea, I know that one of the things that um, you told me is that your master's was in a subject called assisted reproduction. That's and correct. I'm going to um, ask you to explain that in a minute to people. Because, <laughs> but I'll tell you why I bring that up is because I know that the other thing that you're very passionate about, and it's something that um, Anvita and I have talked about a lot is this whole idea of semen retention and all the misconceptions and the myths around it and what people on social media are saying about it and how much it is influencing the younger generation who are listening in. And I really think it's time to clear up some of these issues. So tell us a little bit about assisted reproduction. Um, so my master's was actually in a subject called clinical embryology. I just say assisted reproduction because people tend to understand that a little bit more than clinical embryology. That's a very vague term. But essentially what I studied was um, how we can help people who are battling infertility or battling fertility issues, how we can help them conceive, which meant that I spent three quarters of my master's examining a lot of semen. So I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> and even after my master's, uh, a lot of my work involves analyzing semen, um, seeing what kind of sperm people have, is it healthy or not, and how they can use it better to make their partner pregnant. So I guess the question that is always asked is that if you masturbate, are you wasting your semen? Like this gets asked. And when we were doing sex education, Um, There were so many myths around and so many cultures would stop young men from masturbating because, you know, the idea was that it would impact your fertility or virility and everything. So I guess we have you here to break this first myth in some ways. Um, Does masturbation or when you ejaculate, um, does that impact your, you know, fertility in any way or masculinity? because that's a big question as well. Um, That's a very important question. And thank you for asking it. It's also something I tend to receive very, very often. And masturbating or ejaculating or losing your semen is not bad for your health in any way. This is a very commonly quoted thing that you will hear at gyms, actually, that gym instructors will tell you that you can't masturbate because you're going to lose the protein in your body and it's going to lead you to lose muscle mass. I don't see how that can happen because uh, semen doesn't contain testosterone or protein in such quantities that, uh, you know, ejaculating it would, you know, dramatically alter your uh, health profile. If that were the case, then we wouldn't need to look for food. We could just survive on semen, which we don't. So (laughs) it's a really interesting idea, actually, um, semen diet. But yeah, no, moving on from that very, very um, quickly. Uh, So (laughs) the thing is that we have actually grown up with, and I think there's a lot of medical journals that say that it's made up of 60% of the vitamins and the minerals in your body, or 60% of each uh, quantity of ejaculate has um, vitamins and minerals and things. So, uh, and I know that, again, that's a question that gets asked because a lot of people would say, I used to masturbate a lot and now I've lost so much weight, I can't gain it back again. So aside <laughs> from the semen diet, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, I do want to point out here that there's a correlation between a lot of people um, saying that they've either lost a lot of weight or they've gotten acne or they've gotten hairier as they masturbated. And that's because there's something in science that we call correlation versus causation which is basically that just because two things are happening at the same time, they're correlated. That doesn't mean they're causing the other thing. For example, in Australia, if you have in the summertime, a lot of people eat uh, ice cream, right? And in the summertime, because a lot of people go to the beach, there's a rise in shark attacks. So if somebody were to read this data in a not scientifically educated way, they would say that eating ice cream leads to an increase in shark attacks in Australia. This is a correlation. Causation would be that because it's summertime, people are eating more ice cream. And because it's summertime, more people are at the beach, which means there's more shark attacks. Sharks are wonderful creatures, by the way. Can I just interject and say that? <laughs> They're not <laughs> awful as we make them out to be. Um, so, yeah. What essentially happens is that when we are just hitting puberty, there's an increase in sexual urges, which means we're masturbating a lot more, which also means that because we just hit puberty, our body is producing hormones in a way that it hasn't produced ever, which is leading to acne, which is leading to an increase in facial hair, an increase in body hair, and it's leading to weight loss because for most men, uh, puberty also comes with a lot of definition in their muscles, which means they suddenly shed a lot of weight and they just become a little bit more um, lean is the word possibly mm -hmm. yeah um, masturbating in and of itself does not lead you to lose any of this and semen an average amount of volume of semen is two to five milliliters that's that's a teaspoon <laughs> that's a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon <laughs> that's how much sugar somebody would put in their chai on an average day <laughs> and that is not going to give you a lot of vitamins and minerals um the actual composition of semen it's made up of secretions these secretions contain a small amount of sugar which is fructose to give the little swimmers some energy so they can swim and some minerals a little bit of zinc but that's it. Nothing in extraordinary amounts that you would like to replace your supplements, your regular supplements for your daily dose of semen. Before, Anvita, before you say something, I just want to put in a little point over here because Anvita and I have also answered a lot of questions about oral sex over time. And um, so I want to say that from the makeup of it that you've given us, I just want to say that obviously... It's okay because again, a lot of people always write in and say, uh, this is all sweat and urine. So at least we can say that if you are enjoying oral sex, it is okay to do so that there is things like fructose and zinc and so on. So um, <laughs> you're all right with it. Sorry, Amita, <laughs> you're, um, over to you. No, I was just gonna ask the question that, you know, I did not know that, I knew it was a lot related to the health in industry, but I did not know that the gym instructors would recommend not masturbating and I was wondering where do you think like is this the cross connection with the no fat movement and this whole idea of like not masturbating and the health industry and everything joining together like is that where all these ideas are getting muddled up in some ways and do you want to also tell people about how no fap is different from like the semen retention and like all because I feel like there's so many terms out there now um, that people just you interuse you know interchangeably use them and they're all different things in some ways. Um, while you were speaking, I just came upon this idea about the wellness industry, which is it's quite interesting that if you talk about the wellness industry in general they will always push the idea of female sexual liberation. And they will always push the idea of feminine energy and yoni eggs and things like that, that women should embrace their sexuality. And at the same time, for some strange reason, men are told not to embrace their sexuality or run away from it. And they're given these ideas that embracing your sexuality or your sexual needs and urges is, is somehow a bad thing. I don't know, this is just a random thought that came into my mind. Uh, but that's but such an interesting thought because yeah like why is the movement going there like why are men being told uh that expressing your sexuality and and like we were discussing before it is still coming from the male-centric need in some ways because it is for 
their physique and their virility and their energy and all of it. So that is being kept in question, but it is interesting. I, I isn't, it would be interesting to pose that question to a lot of people that why is the movement going towards, um, you know, reducing the male sexuality versus enhancing it in some ways. Yeah. Very interesting chain of thought <laughs> that just, mm. I don't know. Um, for example, if you've seen Goop by Gwyneth Paltrow, she has uh, a lot of focus on masturbation. Generally, anywhere, if you talk about more new age um, um, ideas of health and wellness, the wellness industry at large, it's quite interesting to think of it. But um, since we were on the NoFap versus uh, semen retention idea, I've just opened the NoFap website in front of me. And it says that NoFap is a secular community-centered sexual health platform designed to help you overcome porn addiction, porn overuse, and compulsive sexual behavior. So these are the three things. We are here to help you quit or reduce porn use, improve your relationships, and reach your sexual health goals. And nowhere does it say that masturbation is bad. Nowhere does it say that we are here to tell you not to masturbate. It only says we are here to tell you to stop using or reduce your use of pornography. Mm. And that has somehow been conflated and mixed with semen retention. Now, I believe uh, Seema will be able to tell us much better about uh, semen retention in general, but I know that it's distinct from NoFap. So over to you, Seema. No, so this idea of semen retention has just kind of, um, I think it's like you said, it's kind of got mixed up all in one. But when you look at our old mythologies, the stories are always about retaining semen. You know, it's like the man was never supposed to lose his semen. And I, I think, uh, you know, that this must have been when they were trying to build up society. They were trying to build up the numbers. So this is going back into the ancient past when these stories are written because whenever you read a story, you know, the king is sitting by the riverside, he sees something, he gets very excited, he ejaculates, then he carefully gathers it up on a leaf and he sends it with a bird to his wife or it falls. You know what I mean? Like it's always used, it's never to be wasted. And I imagine that it was because um, they believed that it wasn't something that they could have on tap all the time. It would take time for a man to ejaculate um, regularly or very regularly or maybe twice in a row or whatever so I, I i guess they must have thought that this was important for them to be able to build up their society and that's why there was this whole point of retaining semen now in ancient i did a, a, a video some years ago about what all the ancient erotic texts talk about you know on different subjects and the uh, I did one on semen retention, by the way, which has probably got the most hits of any other video that I did in the past, because I personally think that the, the ones that were very exciting were the ones about jewelry during sex or love bites or love scratches. But no, it's the one on semen retention that got the most hits. And um, all I'd said was that it's the Chinese texts actually that offer how to hold back your semen. So the ancient Indian text, the Kama Sutra talks a little bit about to hold it back, but that's during lovemaking, during sex. Uh, because the Chinese texts are the ones that really focus in on it because they kind of, they tell you that if you are going to be having sex, then you need to do a minimum of four to 5,000 thrusts to prove that you are, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a wild amount, you know, to prove that you're a good <laughs> lover. Anything less than that, 300 thrusts are like useless. You can't do it. And hence, for 5,000 thrusts, you really had to be able to retain your semen. And so they give you all these ideas about um, visualize monkeys jumping from branch to branch, and you can hold your ejaculation back um, uh, unendingly. But you know, I guess the idea here was to shift your focus. So basically, if you stop thinking about what you're doing, you are going to stop you might even go a little bit fla flax you know i mean you might even go a bit soft so you would automatically stop or there's this one about there's a particular point on the left side of your chest if you press that point now i don't think it's any one particular point but it was about the focus of looking for that one particular point focusing on that putting your finger there or putting your tongue against the palate again that's another one that they suggest these were all ideas 
to stop yourself from ejaculating while you're having sex so that you can continue longer. I have to say that the Kama Sutra and the ancient Indian texts talk about pleasuring the woman before you penetrate her. They say, at least bring her to orgasm twice before you penetrate her, so that you're not over there saying that you're just going to be, you know, thrusting away for hour upon hour upon hour. Because frankly, as I've said before, most women don't find that extremely pleasurable at all, not for that long anyway. Um, I think there are other ways of doing it. But yeah, semen retention seems to just have become such a, a fascinating subject for a lot of people. And like you said, a lot of them are mixing it up with masturbation, with no fab, with celibacy, because we hear that this is all about celibacy, about this being sinful. In ancient um, Christian belief, for instance, they would constantly tell you, you'll go blind if you masturbate. So yeah, the, those are the, the, the ancient cultural ideas around this. Yeah. No, and, and, and that is really interesting because I think it has always, like it has been so confusing and people have really struggled with the idea of masturbation and seen it as something sinful and you know when we start talking about the cultural values and how then you're seen as a bad person because you masturbate and all those things and and you start judging yourself and I have worked with both men and women who then really struggle with their own values and morality when it comes to masturbation. Uh, because they're all these, culturally, it's not something that you know has been transferred as saying that that's healthy, it's normal, it's normal to have sexual feelings and to masturbate. Um, and obviously, like you're saying, Seema, all these religious or cultural ideas around like not wasting your semen then come into the picture as well. And I'm wondering if either of you have thoughts around th this. Um, I tend to see it a lot in my practice. Uh, for example, so uh, at Oxford, we had, uh, along with my degree, there were obviously several other degrees. One of the degrees was a PhD in theology. And uh, at one of these dinners, I met a theologian and I told him what I do. And he was obviously very upset because a large part of infertility treatments involves somebody masturbating in a cup. So we can use that semen, take the sperm out of it and artificially inject it into the egg and make a baby or, you know, different other variations of this. And he was really upset about... Uh, the, the number of other sperm that are going to be lost there. So I was a very confused because, you know, if somebody has an inherent desire to have a child, who are you to comment on what's happening to the other sperm, right? Uh, that means that every act of sex that does not lead to uh, a baby being formed is a waste. And, uh, you know, I mean, if, if somebody's trying, that means they're being sinful. Is, is this some sort of a punishment that they're getting that they're not able to conceive? That's a very shameful idea to, you know, put onto and thrust onto somebody who's already struggling so much with their fertility issues. But this is, you know, sort of the more extreme end of the spectrum. On the very basic end, there is so much shame around sexuality because of ideas like this, that we have physical manifestations of this in, you know, conditions like vaginismus where, uh, you know, a, a vagina owner just their vagina basically just just closes shut if they have a very rigorously um, negative ideology towards sex. Their vagina physically clamps shut and they cannot be penetrated. And they, it takes a lot of therapy. It takes a lot of physically dilating the vagina with different you know instruments that they can eventually maybe experience sex in their life at all or not even sex you know it's something as simple as inserting a tampon is a nightmare for people with vaginismus so the the amount of shame and the amount of stigma we're associating with something as natural and as simple as masturbation is so damaging to you know the the, the sexual psyche of people in the long run that it's sad. yeah i have a question for you so a lot of people in recent times on social media, I've actually seen a couple of people talk about how 
if the semen is not ejaculated in the normal way, so if it's not, you don't masturbate it out or if you don't um, use it in sex, basically that the semen will travel inwards and upwards in your body and do wonderful things for the rest of you. Is that something that can happen? I mean, I'm almost frightened at the thought of something tra- that's supposed to go out traveling back upwards, but tell us the actual scientific detail behind that. Let me see if I have one of my models lying around. Back here, don't I? I have three uteruses on my table and not a single ball sack outside. Um, but essentially what happens is that the scrotum or the testicles, these are the semen producing factories. So this is where you make semen. You can get rid of it. Even if you don't get rid of it, you're going to get a new batch in three months. Even if you don't masturbate and even if you don't ejaculate. There's a fresh new batch, like a new wholesale delivery, new stock of sperm every three months. From the testicles, there is one exit out. It will exit out through uh, a channel, a highway of sorts, and that highway leads on to the main road, which is the penis. So imagine there's a giant highway and the, the main road uh, on the highway is the, the, the duct through which the semen comes out. There is there's no possible way that the semen that is being produced can go out anywhere other than out through the penis. It can stay in there and it can eventually die off and then obviously make new sperm in three months. But sperm can't travel upwards. And one distinction that I'd like to make here is that sperm and semen are two different things. So sperm are little tiny tadpole-like things that are there in the semen itself. Imagine they're small men or small people. And semen is the vehicle in which these small people travel in. So imagine semen is the car. So the car is produced because the people need to travel. You know, if you're not going to masturbate, the, the, if you're not going to ejaculate, the, rest, the remaining part of the semen will not be produced. The sperm will still be there in a precursor form, in like a more less mature form. And if the process of ejaculation is, were to happen, then they will move out, sit in their car and drive out. <laughs> if they don't have to drive out, they won't get the car in the first place. So it's just not going to be produced. It's not like it's going to go travel upwards in some other direction and give you some superpower. So you see, because in Tantra, we talk about the idea of um, harnessing your sexual energy. And so it's about... It's very much about the energy. It's about understanding that when you raise your, um, I guess call it metabolism in scientific terms, but basically when you raise your energy, that energy floods every part of your uh, body. It's not going to sort of stick to one part or whatever. It it goes through your body. And we say that it starts at the Muladhara chakra, which is right at the bottom. And that's where the energy starts to radiate upwards um, from. And we, over here, we talk about a very intangible shakti. It's about energy. It's about a whole lot of other things. And again, this is something that people confuse with the idea of semen, with sperm, with, I mean, a lot of people don't actually understand that the two things are separate. Semen and sperm are separate. But, you know, there is there are just so many misconceptions around it. And um, we do, Anvita and I get a lot of questions around this thing where people get very con- I mean, it all kind of gets mixed up one into the other. So it, it's one question with like a, a gazillion tentacles to it. Uh, but uh, I mean, is there just something that you can actually explain in terms of what is the difference between, let's say, you know, I know we start off by saying what's the difference between semen retention and no fap. But what is the distinct difference between what um, are the benefits of either, if at all. Are there any benefits? Let's see. So, ejaculating releases a hormone called prolactin and prolactin helps you be sleepy. Like it makes you sleepy. So if you don't ejaculate, you won't release a lot of prolactin, which means you won't feel very sleepy. So if you really want to stay up, not ejaculating might help. 
but okay. i don't know what the <laughs> what the point of that is <laughs> hey some people um, like staying up okay yeah but yeah, i'm I mean, also thinking they have to go to sleep right <laughs> yeah. but also it's like people don't really masturbate only at night like you know people would masturbate all the time right so um or the morning masturbation is a very normal routine that a lot of people practice so i feel like once again um you know people can confuse the ideas with like so it does i do think masturbation relaxes you so it helps in sleeping because it de-stresses you and it relaxes you and then i think you sleep better and i'm sure um that helps with it but it also for some people it energizes them and the morning masturbation routine is a very common routine that we hear often from people it certainly um, i mean a self pleasure routine for me is extremely important because i think that it just um it just sort of um, sheds a lot of unwanted baggage and you move on to the next thing so to me it's as important as saying okay you know i have to do this much exercise for my body i do this much exercise for my brain and i do this much exercise for myself you know so you have the three different things um i think that's a great way of putting it and you know yes there's so many different kinds of masturbation people practice it. some people masturbate in the morning some at night some in the middle of the day a lot of people masturbate when they're stressed especially you know there's been a huge upsurge in people masturbating right now because of the pandemic and you know the sort of stress that comes with it because it's a great form of stress relief it's like biochemically documented that it reduces your um the stress that your body feels it can reduce it can lead to a reduction in your blood pressure it can promote the secretion of oxytocin which means you bond better if you're doing it with yourself then you bond better with yourself and what's better than self love and if you do it with somebody else then you know it increases the the bond you have between you and your partner if you're masturbating or if you're ejaculating as a part of your uh, coupled sexual practice um there's a very interesting study that i always like to quote when somebody asks me about the bad side of masturbation and this is that this is not the bad side heads up <laughs> which is that this is a study from harvard no less so it's not like this is some shady study in some back alley but uh they compared the risk of risk of prostate cancer in people who masturbated and people who did not masturbate and they found that if you masturbate over 21 times a month which is almost every day you have a 30% lower risk of getting prostate cancer it's a big big number <laughs> it's not a small it's number it's a big number and you're literally protecting yourself from cancer by pleasuring yourself <laughs> like quite literally so we have this thing about saying that you know you heal through pain you can heal through grief and you can heal through pleasure and certainly there are a lot of texts that talk about healing through pleasure you know using different types of um, means um including the, we have um a, you know and I actually created a chapter in my book on this about how there's a whole study from ancient times about how you can use different sexual positions to heal chronic illnesses Ooh. yeah so where you use thrusting and your breath to um uh, to push your energy through certain parts of your body so you know it's something that has been used for thousands of years it's something that's been talked about for thousands of years we seem to have come to a point i do i do get the point that maybe people have have started to get addicted to it and fair enough anything that you get addicted to is not a good idea but as anvita has always said that you know you reach a certain age you automatically i mean like you have nightfall there are things that you automatically do it's not a a bad thing to be masturbating and it's not an unnatural thing particularly in younger people yes isn't that right anvita um, yeah absolutely in voluntary will always have a release right and we talk about wet dreams or night falls and every uh, thing and also i i actually feel um, this idea of addiction is something once again people just assume and you know the naya just said that 
masturbating 21 days actually helps in your physical health. And people literally, when they come and they speak about addiction, they would say, oh, I'm, I'm masturbating three times a week. I'm addicted, you know, and that, and I've defined this before. We only consider something an addiction if it is, it is not allowing you to complete your daily function. So that, you know, when we talk about masturbation addiction or porn addiction, we're talking about people who are unable to go to work or are unable to finish their studies or their work because there is such a strong urge that they need to watch porn or they need to masturbate, that they're actually unable to attend their classes or attend work meetings and they feel the compulsiveness to do it. Uh, just because you're masturbating every day does not mean that you have an addiction in any way possible. Um, it is actually could be, as Seema was saying, or as Tanaya was saying, could be your self-care or self-love or taking care of your sexuality every day. So you could see it as a self-care routine that you practice every day rather than seeing it negatively in uh, some ways. Um, so that is another you know, point to consider, because I think a lot of time people start worrying about this, uh, that masturbation is something bad, and I'm doing it every day. And like we said, at the beginning, they're also connected to values about themselves that oh, if they're then they're like bad people, because they're engaging in masturbation. But then, sorry, I was going to ask that, is there a, a, a point that you would say what so as I was saying, you know, that it, when you're a certain age, it's sort of so natural. Um, you have nightfall, even if you don't voluntarily masturbate, or it, you know, you don't sort of, that semen is going to come through. Um, it, it will happen. Is there a point at which it becomes a lot more controlled and there is when you start thinking of this as an issue? I know that we've said that at no point is this an issue to be considered, but Let's talk about it in the wider uh, spectrum. That is there at any point where you would say that it becomes something to think about a lot more or consider before doing? Um, like uh, Anvita mentioned, of course, you know, if it's becoming a compulsive behavior where you're not able to perform daily life activities, say you're skipping work to stay at home and masturbate, say you're skipping. I don't know, eating lunch to stay home and masturbate. Th these things happen and this is a part of compulsive sexual behavior. Um, but aside from this, there are physical ramifications as well. So for example, if you're masturbating so much that you have chafed genitals or, you know, if you're just, if it's becoming inflamed and painful, then obviously it's a good marker that you need to stop. Um, largely, I think, it's kind of like, is exercising bad for you? If you're exercising to a degree that it's hurting your knees and you're losing the mobility in your joints because, you know, you've just, uh, what do you call it? Giz the iron for. If it's gotten to that degree, then of course, you know, you have to stop. But exercise in general is good for you. Overdoing it to the degree that it's physically hurting you or mentally hurting you in some way is um, possibly the 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 time when you stand outside with the stop sign and you're like, okay, you need to chill. But um, largely in itself, there's no reason to not do it. And think of the kind of shame that will come to somebody who is having, you know, who's experiencing nightfall. And nightfall is a very, very um, natural and routine part of your sexual development. People have it well into their adulthood as well. So it's not like it's something you experience only when you're younger. But imagine the amount of shame it must bring to somebody who is feeling like I've lost a lot of protein in my body or I've lost a lot of good energy or I've lost something precious that I should be storing away. Uh, you know, I, I, it's such a negative thought to put in somebody's head. And especially somebody that much younger who is going to grow up thinking, oh, my God, this is so bad for me. And what have I done to myself? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think what it also does is that it increases a little bit of sexual frustration because if you take young people, they are sexually curious. They are, hormones are creating havoc in their body. And 
masturbation is a safe way of releasing some of that sexual energy and thing. Uh, you know, when you create all these myths around them and they then feel negatively about themselves, it just creates a very complex pattern of growing up and identity in some ways. Uh, whereas masturbation is a very simple and healthy way of sexually expressing yourself or releasing sexual energy that might be present as a young person with the hormones uh, being very present. So I guess um, from my side, so if we were going to say that there are the three of us sitting over here trying to bust a few myths about this idea of semen retention. Um, and in, uh, so my offering, if you will, um, is to say that, okay, people generally, the questions that come to me are, what does the Kama Sutra say about such and such a thing? So I just wanted to say that in the, in the time of the Kama Sutra, the idea of semen retention, if at all, would have been mentioned during sexual activity. The idea of holding yourself back a little bit longer so that you don't come too soon, so that you can pleasure your partner. And the Kama Sutra definitely says that women take far longer to come to pleasure than men do. And you being able to hold your semen for that long and keep trusting is not going to do it. So if you are trying to retain your semen while having sex in order to give your partner more pleasure, it does say very categorically, bring her to pleasure with a bunch of other things. Make sure that she has at least two orgasms before you penetrate her and then have sex. And then at that point, let it be mutual. Don't hold yourself back to such a long time that nobody really knows what's going to happen next. And if you want to hold on a little bit longer, that's fine. But so long as there is an end in sight. So from the point of view of the Kama Sutra, I am merely saying that the idea of semen retention was about um, giving your partner more pleasure. I think something on that you mentioned that it never seems to be about the other gender at the moment when people talk about it. But yes, so that's what they were talking about. And as far as we're concerned, um, find a lot of other ways of giving your partner pleasure because honestly, there are many other ways of doing it as well. It almost seems like this was a, sort of an ancient way of practicing edging, which is where you just get to the brink of orgasm and then stop to make yourself last longer in bed. If you know people have these ideas that they're having premature ejaculation, which most often they're not. Um, but it almost sounds like this was just a practice of edging as opposed to a practice of oh my God, it's going to be awful if you mass if you release your semen and oh, all hell will break loose and you're sinful. Yeah. Yeah, so I think um, definitely it was either about edging or even if they say, like you said, a lot of people don't have the ability, they get to that point of such excitement, they don't have the ability to hold back. You just want to make sure that your partner has also been pleasured, make sure that she has her orgasms before you decide to do it so that you don't have to go through this thing of saying, have I prematurely ejaculated or should I have been retaining my semen? Because honestly, you would not believe the number of people who seem to be worried about it and the number of emails that I've been getting on it. Anvita, what do you say? So I, I just want to say, obviously, that I think there are lots of myths around there and people say them with such strong conviction about, like <laughs> I started the video, but virility and fertility and masculinity being lost by it and they transfer that idea that it really creates a complex world for young people and their sexuality so there are a lot of myths look up the scientific things like Tanaya help us a lot telling us the physiology the makeup the pro you know all those myths in some ways so read up about it in some ways um, before you just take what is out there, you know, in societal and cultural ways. So read up and look up the scientific knowledge before you make up your mind. So that's and finally, normally, Tanea, I finish this uh, video by sort of, you know, compressing everything that we've talked about, making the points and uh, reiterating them. But today I'm going to actually ask you to do that as our expert on semen. Um, I want you to give us your offering on the idea of semen retention, plus just reiterate in 
sort of bullet points, all the wonderful advice and information that you brought to us. Um, okay, so I'm gonna sum it up in one line. If it makes you happy in some way, don't masturbate, but not masturbating is not going to do anything magical for your health. That's it, that's literally it. This is the, this is the crux of the modern myth of semen retention and becoming a superhero from there. Um, a masturbation in and of itself is actually pretty good for you. It leads to better cardiovascular health, which means better heart health. It leads to, some studies have reported a lower risk of cancer. It can make you feel more relaxed. It can lead to better bonding with yourself and your partner. Well, it sounds like a good thing, right? Like <laughs> It generally does sound like a good thing. And yet um, it's always viewed, I think it's just because it's got this taboo and this whole sort of aura around it. And there must be somebody out there who is pushing this. I mean, you know, all these thoughts get pushed on a multi-million dollar industry for some, some benefit or the other. And unfortunately, I've noticed, I have a 23 year old in my house and I've noticed how deeply impacted the younger people are by what, what they hear on social media. And I think that it's such, I mean, you know, it, it is such a huge position of responsibility. People out there on social media, when they say certain things, because I we have a pretty open household where we talk about almost everything. And she knows that she can come and discuss things with me, but still she will choose to follow a lot of the stuff that she hears on social media because it's almost gospel. Because when one of the influencers has said it, they must know what they're talking about. So there is there are billions of people out there like that of that age group. And I think it's very irresponsible to report incorrect stuff. So whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing, that's fine. But just get the facts right. And don't put people in situations where they end up feeling miserable and almost like want to self-harm because they think that they've done the wrong thing. And I think that's really, really important. So Tanea, do you want to tell everybody just one more time that it won't do anything for their protein um, levels and their uh, their mineral levels, et cetera? Uh, masturbating will not lead you to losing protein. It will not lead to poorer muscle formation. If you are you know, working out, if you're at the gym and you're trying to build a more muscular physique, Masturbation will not harm you. Uh, masturbation does not affect your athletic performance in any way. Um, it makes it gives you better heart health, which is the same thing that exercise and you know working out does. So it, it's possibly going to boost it, if anything. Yeah. See, I do know that almost all football coaches will say, or a lot of sports coaches will say to their team that um, you know before a game, before a match, uh, or at least when the teams are training that. Um, sex is definitely not permitted. They're not allowed to have women in the locker rooms. They're not allowed to have women in their rooms before that. And I'm imagining, I mean, I always think it's because it's about distractions and it's about getting to bed early and so on and so forth. But as, uh, as our in-house doctor today, would you like to reiterate any of that? I completely agree with you. I think it's a distraction thing. There is the, the few studies that we have um, do show that, um, you know, masturbating right before a sports activity, that can cause maybe a reduction in your performance right before. But like if you masturbate the night before, you're going to be all right. <laughs> the only thing is distraction for sure. Anvita, anything to add before we finish? No, I was, the, the thing that keeps coming up for me again and again, as we've spoken so much about semen today and assisted, um, <laughs> reproduction and all is Vicky donor and for a lot of our Indian viewers uh, this idea which as in, what I've been reflecting it on is that though it was a lovely movie that you know broke myths around IVF and everything um, there was a strong idea that it was something that he should have been shameful about or, you know, hide that he was donating his semen and that made him not a acceptable person or cool person or it wasn't you know a, a nice thing to be doing and so it was it once again it was had a lot of value judgment and morality attached to it um, and it was only because it had helped 
so many people have children, it was made acceptable. But, uh, you know, semen samples are given for a lot of people and a lot of men feel very awkward about that whole act of going and giving semen for testing and otherwise. And, uh, and, I, and it just, and there was a lot of things that Seema, that you had said and Tanaya had said, which all somewhere feels like society trying to you know, control people's sexuality or ways of being and all these ideas. Um, so that, you know, I, just as a last thought, like, I just felt like, how could we talk so much about semen and not about Vicky Donor uh, in some ways? So yeah, that was just on my mind. I, I, I think that's a great thing to bring in. I'm glad you mentioned him. Um, he's very important culturally, actually, yeah. because I think it was a bit of a breakthrough that film. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, um, as we sign off, I'd like to say thank you to both Anvita and Tanea for being with us um, here today and bringing their thoughts and their experience and their expertise and their knowledge to the program. Because I personally have found it really, really interesting. There's a lot of things, Tanea, that you told me today, which I didn't know about. And I have to say that whenever we have done one of these programs, there's always somebody or the other who writes in and says, don't listen to these women. They're trying to lead you down the wrong path. They're trying to lead you down the bad path. They're trying to make you evil. We're not trying to make anybody evil. We're truly not trying to lead anybody down the right path, if anything. We're just trying to clear away misconceptions so that whatever you choose to do, as Tanea said, if you choose to not masturbate or you choose to retain your semen, that is an, it's, a, it's a choice that is completely up to you to make. If you choose to masturbate and not retain your semen, that is also your choice. Just do it from a point of knowledge. Understand what you're doing. That's all this chat is about. And I really hope that you will take this away. And, um, and I hope that this will help you in the next sort of phase of your life. Because I think that we have enough things to worry about, genuinely to worry about. And we don't need to add misconceptions and myths to that. I think that we can all live healthily. Mental health is what we're after over here. So if you need to get in touch with me, I am on info.seema.anand at gmail.com. You can send your questions into that. Anvita is on? Anvita.madanbehel at gmail.com. And the spellings and everything will be in the text below. And Tanea is on? Dr. Underscore Cutris at gmail. No, wait, that's not my email ID. What's my email? Ah, Dr. Cutris at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It'll be in the, in the description down below. Um, if you found the video useful, if you enjoyed listening to it, please do like, comment, subscribe. Stay healthy, stay well. Things are difficult at the moment. Um, we hope that you come out of it in good mental, physical, and emotional health. And we will see you again soon.